Will Jamie and Cersei's relationship survive season 7? Will Cersei hang on to the Iron Throne? And what will Tyrion be up to? These are my predictions for House Lannister in season 7. Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek, particularly if you're a first time viewer. Please do consider subscribing if you enjoy the video. This is the first of three predictions videos I'll be doing for season 7. The other two, one on Daenerys' invasion and the other on House Stark and the North, will follow next week. And for those who've been asking, yes I will be doing detailed breakdowns of every episode in season 7 when they come out. But today we're looking at House Lannister. I'm basing these predictions on where all the characters' story arcs are going and what we learned from the official trailers. So don't expect leaked set photos, but do expect some slightly spoilery speculation. After Cersei's destruction of the Great Sept and Tommen's suicide, there are now only three Lannisters left. Jaime, Cersei and Tyrion. And all three will be central to the action in Season 7. Let's start where we left off in Season 6, with Cersei's coronation. Jaime returned just in time to see it, and the look he gave her then was not a loving one. I think we will be thrown straight into a confrontation between Jaime and Cersei. There is a lot for them to talk about. From Jaime's perspective, Cersei has just murdered his uncle and cousin, and through her actions, driven his last remaining child to commit suicide. She didn't even wait for Jamie's return before burning Tommen's ashes. She's also destroyed the graves of his father and his two other children. Leaving aside for one moment whatever he thinks about the wider carnage she caused and her shameless power grab, Jamie will be livid with her, and rightly so. I will be fascinated to see what Cersei says here. Will she even admit how Tommen died? Jaime will also, I think, be unable to avoid drawing a parallel between Cersei's use of wildfire and the Mad King's in ordering him to burn them all. Jaime's sense of honour led him to kill King Aerys to save thousands of innocent lives, but he wasn't there when Cersei gave the order to burn the Great Sept. Jamie has been on a moral journey over the last six seasons. It's more obvious in the books than in the show, but he is slowly, inch by inch, becoming a better man. A man who cares more about doing the right thing, and caring less about just doing what Cersei wants him to do. So the greater issue here for the story is the wedge that Cersei's actions will have driven between them. Jamie's infatuation with and loyalty towards Cersei has driven so much of the action in Game of Thrones. He is now very close to abandoning both. Cersei, for her part, now has only one person left who she truly cares about. Jamie, And now, more than ever, she needs him. She needs him to help secure her hold on the throne. Firstly, she will be very aware that she has no heir. All her children are gone, and the new Lannister dynasty that she has instigated will need an heir. She may well want to marry for political reasons, but that didn't stop her in the past from still ensuring that Jaime was the father of her children. Secondly, she will need Jaime to head up the Lannister army. She has already declared war on two of the great houses of Westeros, and she has a massive invasion fleet heading her way. She needs a general she can trust. Given the trailer footage, it seems that any argument they have will be resolved, albeit perhaps uneasily, and Jaime will be on Team Lannister for most of this season. And there are other pressures on Cersei's new reign. First, the crown is in serious debt. The Lannister fortune has dried up, and the only house with sufficient funds to help out, the Tyrells, is in no mood to do that. 
The Iron Bank have set out their demands for repayment and Cersei has rejected them, so we can expect to see a firm response from them. Second, King's Landing's food supply is in danger because it largely comes from the Reach and Elena Tyrell is not about to help Cersei in this way either. This is obviously pretty fundamental, so Cersei will need to deal with it as a priority. Third, there is of course Daenerys' invasion. We can expect her to demand that the rulers of Westeros swear fealty to her or face the consequences. It's rather stating the obvious to say that Cersei will simply dismiss this out of hand. Now, Cersei is not the kind of person to just sit back and let events take their course. She is proactive, and her default position is to attack her enemies, and the one enemy that links all three of these threats is Elena Tyrell. She is sitting on large supplies of gold, controls the food supply, and has signed up to Danny's alliance. So we can expect an attack on Highgarden reasonably early on in the season. We shouldn't, of course, expect Elena Tyrell to go down without a fight, but her weapons are words, not swords, particularly now a large chunk of House Tyrell's forces have gone off to support Daenerys' invasion. So what could she say to General Jaime Lannister that would cause the most damage? I can think of two things. Firstly, Elena could tell him about Cersei cheating on him with Lancel. Remember, it was her who confronted Lancel with the truth of what he did, forcing him to confess it to the High Sparrow. It's not at all clear in the show whether Jaime has ever really discovered the truth about Cersei's infidelity, but in the books it is a major part of their disintegrating relationship. Second, Elena could admit to Jaime that she killed Joffrey. The first of these truths will drive Jaime further from Cersei. The second, knowing for sure that Tyrion is innocent of killing Joffrey, will bring Jaime closer to Tyrion. A shift in his affections that will, I think, continue throughout Season 7. But what about Tyrion? He will, in many ways, be the person who ties everything together in Season 7. His journey so far has brought him into contact with almost all of the characters in our drama. The Starks at Winterfell, the main players in King's Landing, and now all of Daenerys' advisors. So expect a series of reunions for Tyrion, with Jaime, Cersei, Jon the Hound and Bronn. In fact, although it won't be central to the plot, it's the reunion between Tyrion and Bronn that I'm most looking forward to. I'm sure that they will have a lot to catch up on. And there are also Ilaria and the Sand Snakes, of course. How will Tyrion feel about teaming up with them since they killed his niece, Marcella? It's a useful reminder that Team Daenerys is an alliance based on a shared set of enemies, Cersei and Euron, rather than a shared vision of the rightness of Danny's claim. Nevertheless, Tyrion's most important role this season will be as Hand of the Queen to Daenerys. How she reacts to his advice will be central to how the action pans out. Judging from the past, her first instinct on landing will be to send the dragons in to burn down King's Landing and claim the Iron Throne, something Tyrion will understandably be strongly against, on the grounds of the likely catastrophic loss of innocent lives. And when Daenerys does go on the offensive, as she surely will after the Lannisters attack Highgarden, then Tyrion's diplomatic work will probably have to focus on Jaime. Cersei certainly won't be down for negotiating, and I think through the season we'll see Jaime's loyalty to Cersei chipped away, piece by piece. First there was the repercussions of Cersei blowing up the Great Sept, then by Elena Tyrell's revelations. Then, perhaps by Cersei's decision to get engaged for political reasons, probably to Euron. And then, most emphatically, by the realisation that the Lannisters don't stand a chance against three massive dragons. The trailer seemed to show two big losses for the Lannisters. Of Casterly Rock, their home, and then what looks like the complete wiping out of their army on a field of fire. 
Now I can see Jamie returning to Cersei after this, and after Tyrion offers some sort of terms of surrender, finding that Cersei simply refuses to accept reality. And season seven is when reality hits for everyone. Everyone will be confronted by the fact that the White Walkers are coming. Tyrion will be crucial in vouching for Jon when he tries to persuade people, particularly Daenerys, that the threat is real. I don't think he will succeed the first time. Danny is far too focused on claiming the Iron Throne, but he will eventually. But Cersei will not be convinced. I think this shot of her breathing cold air shows where her sympathies will lie. Let's not forget that her closest advisor is now someone who reanimates corpses and is fascinated with death. She herself appears nearly lost to human compassion, driven only to retain power for herself. Everything points to her simply not caring about the threat from the White Walkers, even when everyone else is finally convinced that they need to pull together. This, I think, will be the final dramatic moment for Jamie and Cersei. Their children are now all dead. She has committed the same atrocity that Jamie broke his most sacred vow to prevent previously. He has found someone else who, though she may never say it, understands the real him. And now Cersei appears to have lost all trace of human kindness or empathy. This, I think, is the moment when he finally leaves her, literally and metaphorically, leaving her side to fight against the White Walkers and putting aside his love for her in favour of a higher calling. So, although Cersei starts the season in a precarious position, enemies closing in on her from all sides, I predict that she will end it exactly how she started it, sitting isolated on the Iron Throne. Jaime will finally have embraced the nobility in his character that was always there, but hidden so deep, and Tyrion will still be hand to the Queen, but a pensive one, knowing that her propensity to violence is growing with age, but that her dragons are needed now more than ever. What do you think? What do you think the Lannisters will face in Season 7? Let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to support me in producing more videos like this, as well as getting access to more of my content, please click through to my Patreon page. I really do appreciate it. And if you want to know when my next video comes out, then please click on the subscribe button and make sure your notifications are enabled. Thanks for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.